Hello everyone, my name is The Ultimate Spy, and welcome to another episode of Reviewed. Reviewed number 199. And today, I'm going to be reviewing Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, the sequel to Jurassic World, and the fifth installment in the Jurassic Park franchise. So, what did I think of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom? Well, I honestly really enjoyed it. I feel like it wasn't nearly as good as the first one, but still really darn good. I know that a lot of critics complain about it, some of them saying it that the series had run its course, but I'm thinking to myself, like, seriously? Are you not a Jurassic Park or Dinosaur fan that you think that the series should end? Like... Oh my goodness. I disagree in so many ways. I definitely feel like that is just an opinion. Some people who see franchises go for a long time, they feel like eventually they should end. But this series has only been going for five films. That's nothing. I know that some films, they have significant gaps in between them. Like the Pirates of the Caribbean series, which has also been going on for five films, but it's like... Seriously. The Jurassic Park franchise is one of the biggest franchises in Hollywood especially under Universal, because Universal is one of the biggest Hollywood studios in America. It's like, come on. This franchise is awesome. If you think this series should end, you're obviously not a fan of the series. You know, I, I do feel like each film is different, and this film was very different from the previous ones, for sure, like a lot. I mean, it definitely had a lot of vibes to it, for sure, like a lot of similarities between the first two films. But with this film... It opens very similarly to the original Jurassic Park film. Not exactly the same, but it definitely has a similar vibe going for it, where, you know, they're doing a thing, you know, with, with dinosaurs, and there's a chasing going on, and, and death, and all that stuff. And obviously, they're they're getting a piece of the dominant structure they can make the new breed. But, like, in terms of timeline, it takes place about three years after the events of the first film. Jurassic World is now in a withered state, you know, it's falling apart because of what the Indominus Rex did. Although everyone knows that the idea behind Jurassic World in the first place was it was supposed to be a bigger, more expansive park built over the original park on the same island. And it's actually more like a theme park and resort than a, than what it originally was. And in general, I, re I just really enjoyed coming back to the park and seeing how it's changed and seeing what it's what has left it essentially so yeah it's just like seeing seeing the park you know in, in dismay it's just like almost post-apocalyptic almost kind of like what happened to this place kind of thing so th that was really interesting to see and this sequel actually sees the return of ian malcolm from the first two films if you remember he was in the original film but also he did return for the lost world film even though that film was probably my least favorite Jurassic park film just because it's so long and so boring <laughs> yeah my opinion just wasn't a huge fan of the second one, but like in general, it's just really, really cool to see him come back. I mean, obviously he's going to be in the third film, but like, it's just so cool because like, obviously it's an older version of the same character. He's got a beard and everything, but like, it's cool. He appears at the beginning of the film talking about the dinosaurs and what he thinks should happen with the dinosaurs since the volcano has been erupt. And that the idea of Jurassic World has become quite literally... Jurassic World because it's a world overrun by the Jurassic period of, of uh, animals because the dinosaurs are not able to free roam and they're going to have to coexist basically that's kind of what's going to be the story of the third one I don't know what's going to happen but like that's kind of the, the concept essentially but it is just so cool to see him back I, I, I just love it and we're going to see him again much more than like an extended cameo we got we got like more like a we got two scenes that acted more like an extended cameo from him but it's just so cool to see him it's just like it's so awesome you know great blast of nostalgia because he's honestly the best part of the Jurassic Park franchise he's the one character that is going to be appearing in more films than, than any other original character because he was in the first two films and he's come back in the sixth film so that means he's in three films Unlike Sam Neill and Laura Dern, who only appeared in two films. So, yeah, it's just it's awesome to see him again. And this sequel introduces us to Ben Lockwood, who's actually a former business partner of John Hammond. He's the one that partnered with Hammond to basically uh, 
crit engine that would basically critted Jurassic Park. Essentially, that's the idea. It's he's like one of those characters where it's like, who's this guy? Like, oh, okay. But yeah, no, he, he's a, he's a, he's a he's a very really important character that was introduced. And on top of that, his granddaughter was actually a clone because his real granddaughter was killed, and so they basically cloned him, which means that you know that it's possible in this world to clone humans. It's been successful. But yeah, she is adorable. She is so cute. It's just she's an interesting character as a whole because she's a clone, so that's like very cool and seeing just seeing how she operates in the world being a clone and all. It's, it's very cool and and just something we've seen in the Jurassic Park series before. That's very cool. And much like the original sequels to Jurassic Park that showed us like, you know, little uh little Easter eggs from the original Jurassic Park. This one actually shows a scaled down model of the original Jurassic Park, which is really cool. It's the scene where Ben and Maisie are talking, and actually Maisie talks about her mother, and apparently it's revealed that her mother visited Jurassic Park once. But like, who was her mother? That's the question. Like, it doesn't really make sense. Like, we only saw one adult female, so I'm kind of confused. Unless she's talking about Lex Murphy, maybe. But she wasn't British, so that doesn't make any sense. And you know. Ellie Sadler wouldn't make sense either because she's American and she has a completely different last name. So I'm a little bit like, like, I mean, I, I think the idea is that, that her mother is in that picture that Maisie sees, but like, uh, I don't know. Like, maybe she just visited Jurassic Park after things happened or before the f events of the first time. I don't know. I don't really understand. Maybe that's a continuity here. I don't, I don't know. It, it's like, we don't even know her mother. So I, I'm a little confused. Although, Last names can kind of change with marital status, but at the same time, I just don't understand. I, I'm really confused about that. So it was really cool to see the original Jurassic Park as a model, but still, like, didn't quite understand that. And one thing I noticed about this sequel is that it has a lot of Jurassic Park 2 vibes going for it in terms of the music, actually. I feel like a lot of the same scoring was used for this film as used for Jurassic Park 2. Obviously, what I'm talking about is the Lost World movie, which is also known as Jurassic Park 2. But I feel like a lot of the, a lot of the score, especially when they're at the park, is very similar to Jurassic Park 2. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I feel like this is the same composer. I think so. I think they all, I think they all have the same composer. I think I might be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure it is true. And on top of that, the idea of Fallen Kingdom is very similar to the second film because it also features an expedition. They're going on an expedition. They have like a team. And so it's it's similar, not not exactly the same, but very similar. So I kind of like that. It, you know, there there's definitely a lot of, a lot of, of the same vibes going for it for uh, the second film, which I kind of like. Even though I didn't like the second film that, all that much because it was really long and really boring. But you know, I guess that's just my opinion. Now another great vibe to the first film was actually the first time we see a brachiosaurus in this film. I mean, obviously we see a couple of brachiosaurus when the BBC World News broadcasts Jurassic World and everything like that, you know, talking about the fall of Jurassic World and all that stuff. We do see some of them. We don't really see them in full body shots. So, like, when we first see them at the remains of the park, it's pretty cool. Like, it's straight from the first film. We even get a little bit of, of Jurassic Park theme tune, which is honestly a little bit disappointing because if you're going to have a Jurassic World Park film, you got to have the Jurassic Park theme. But unfortunately, there wasn't a whole lot of it. There was some. There was some, you know, little little bits in here and there throughout the film, but it just wasn't wasn't anything special. It wasn't like the full theme, like in the last one where we got the full theme. But that, that was more like a a, a reorchestrated version of the same thing. It's basically like a remaster, but like, still. I was a bit disappointed, like, oh, it was great. It was good to hear it, but it was like very, very subtle. And I'm like, oh, come on. <laughs> Considering it is one of the best theme songs of all time, so yeah, still we do that. Seeing the Brachiosaurus again, it definitely reminds me of the first time we see one in the first one, which is pretty freaking cool. Now the title Fallen Kingdom is quite interesting actually, because I didn't quite understand what it meant actually when uh, when they revealed the title of the film. I was a little thrown off because I didn't quite understand the idea behind it, but, but it actually does make a lot of sense because the idea of Fallen Kingdom is the fact that the park is basically about as big as a kingdom. A kingdom is like, you know, obviously a number of, of different lands and everything like that. But in this case, it's, it's, it's uh, the park, which is massive. And the idea of, of Fallen Kingdom is because the volcano erupts, destroying the park, and the park is, is basically a kingdom. So that's why it's called Fallen Kingdom, for those of you who did not know that. But yeah, I think it's pretty obvious, but uh, 
it, it is a little hard to understand why it would be called that, but yeah, that's basically the idea. It's Fallen Kingdom, the park is based on the Kingdom. There you go. Now, another callback to the first film is actually pretty cool. I didn't really think about it until after I saw it a couple more times. But apparently when Owen, Claire, and Franklin are all running from the dinosaurs along with the volcano, you know, teaching them, it's straight from the first film where you have Alan, Tim, and Lex all running from the dinosaur stampede. Wow. I didn't even expect that. Like, that's straight from the first film. They even have a little, a little tree that they have to climb over. It's just, yeah, straight from that. I, I just, I love the vibes. I love, I love the... I love the callbacks. It's just so cool. Now, one of the saddest moments in this film is actually... Oh my god, it's so sad. It's... When the boat is leaving, the island is basically destroyed. It's finishing its destruction, essentially. And one of the Brachiosauruses does not make it. it. It gets left behind. And it's so sad. Because they wanted to save the dinosaurs, and they saved as much as they could, but unfortunately they couldn't save every one of them. So one of the Brachiosauruses, one of the original dinosaurs from the original Jurassic Park, doesn't make it. And it's just so sad. It, even, like, you know, whales, like, you know, it's, it's, it's being left behind. It's just, like, it's heartbreaking. But, you know, I guess that's just the way it is. It's just, you know, powerful storytelling. Yeah, that didn't make that they didn't make it. It's how it is. But it's just, like, oh. It gets me right in the feels like this, this poor dinosaur <laughs> and this happens and this is the effect so it really really sucks now toby jones appears in this film as one of the sellers of the dinosaurs and it's so weird hearing him talk like an american because he's obviously very british it's pretty obvious he didn't he, didn't, he was in harry potter as dobby he was in doctor who was the dream lord and it's just so weird i mean he's been in in multiple american films playing an american but it is so weird hearing him talk like American. Kind of like, uh, I think the name of the actor is Rafa Spell. He talks with an American accent as well. But apparently he's also British, so didn't know that. It's very strange. He's like, oh, he talks like an American. You can barely, you, can, you couldn't even tell him unless you looked it up. Yeah, that guy is also British. But yeah, it's just weird seeing Toby, Toby Jones talk with, a, with an American accent. Although, again, he has played roles like that before. But it's just like, it's so weird. I'm not used to it. And the second half of the film's story is all about the dinosaurs being sold. It kind of flows similarly to Lost World, or in this case, like the dinosaurs being are being sold, which is just crazy. And so, like, it's just like, who would want a dinosaur, first of all? Because they're, they're dangerous. Like, where would you put them? I feel like that's the kind of the story that the film is telling. Like, you know, this is what humans are going to do with the dinosaurs. They're going to sell them. And it's just nuts. Like, that's I think that's the idea that they don't want... They don't want them to sell the dinosaurs. They want them to be free, and that's kind of like the the uh, the problem in the film is is them being sold. So that's kind of like one. That's one of the the story elements of this film is like you know letting them give a, get away with selling the dinosaurs, which is just nuts. Now this film got a lot of criticism in terms of the story, specifically on the uh, concept of the Indoraptor, and I actually kind of liked it. I mean. I'm a die-hard Jurassic Park fan or Jurassic World. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but like still. Uh, it's a really cool idea. I mean, in the last film with the Indominus Rex, you know, a kind of a new hybrid of the of the T Rex, in this film it was the Indoraptor, which is basically combining the Indominus Rex with the with the Velociraptor. It's not that bad. I was looking at some comments about about the franchise as a whole, about where it's where it's kind of going, and people were like saying they they really don't like the idea of the franchise introducing new dinosaurs, like brand new dinosaurs that have never that never never existed before. But it's just like. It's kind of cool, actually, because it's, it's a very interesting way of telling a story of having a whole di dinosaur. I mean, at that point, then it's not really a dinosaur, just like a monster, but it's like, still, like, I don't think they're a problem. Like, some people are just tired of that like, idea, like, you know, them making new hybrids. Like, is there a problem with that? Like, I guess some people just don't like that idea, but like, I, for one, thought that was really cool, and it makes the story of the film a lot more terrifying because the idea of the film is quite terrifying, like... The second half of that film is just, oh my god, it's, it's thrilling and has a lot of sense of horror in it. It's just like that, the, the Interruptor itself is very deadly. It's probably even even deadlier than the Dominus Rex, but it's just like a really cool concept. I, I loved it, you know. Despite what people thought of the film overall, I really, really enjoyed it. And I feel like Fallen Kingdom is almost ripping off of The Lost World just because of how similar they are in the concept, but also... They are still very different films. They're very different films, but they they do share a lot of similarities. Like obviously, 
One of them is they both have a dinosaur that he's saving. You know, with the Lost World, it's a baby T-Rex that needs saving, and then in this film, it's Blue that needs saving. So it's kind of that same idea that kind of makes the two films similar, but still very different. I just when watching this film, I noticed some, a lot of a lot of similarities between the second film and this film because obviously they're 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 both you know the second film in their respective trilogies. But I don't know, I feel like there's a lot of crossover going on between these two films just in terms of the concept and idea of, of both films. They are, they're very different, but uh, I, could, I definitely saw some vibes going on. And one thing I liked about this film was the fact that it used more animatronic dinosaurs than the previous films combined. I know that the first film used an animatronic T-Rex, obviously, even with complications they managed to pull it off. But after that, a lot of the dinosaurs we saw were mostly CGI. The first Jurassic World film used a lot of animatronics, but they also used quite a lot of CGI dinosaurs. But with this film, they upped the game even more with having more animatronics, which is such a cool idea, you know? Because it also gives the actors the ability to feel like they're in the same room with an actual dinosaur because of how realistic it is. I mean, yeah, some of them are CGI. Like There's still... The use of CGI dinosaurs is still present in this film, but I feel like Universal wanted to, you know, pull off the whole idea of animatronic dinosaurs more to make them more realistic and more, you know, practical so that the actors could feel like they're there and, and, and be able to act more naturally instead of having to, like, you know, imagine it, which I kind of like. And not only that, but uh, Dominion, the next film, is going to be using more animatronic dinosaurs than any other film combined. This was basically the next step. Jurassic World, they brought that concept back. This film, they used it more. But in the next film, they're going to be using it more than anything else. They're going to kind of... Be, it'll be their top priority to make it as... to use as much animatronics as they can. And if they have to, CGI. Because, yes, a lot of dinosaurs are going to require CGI. I know that, like, the, the running scenes, CGI. But... It makes me really happy that they're going to really rely on, on using practical effects and making the animatronics. Because with an animatronic, you can make a dinosaur look so real. And it allows the actor to have a better performance because they don't have to imagine it. So that's why I kind of liked how this film was really able to do that. Especially with the, that T-Rex scene where, uh, where Owen and Claire are extracting the T-Rex blood. That's an actual animatronic. Not CGI, so I kind of like that. I, I, I like that was a, it was very practical, so it was really cool. And it's actually revealed that Henry Wu, the geneticist from the first film and the fourth film, is responsible for creating the Indoraptor. I'm pretty sure he's also responsible for creating the Indominus Rex in the fourth film. I don't know, I feel like he's like a, a kind of antagonist. I mean, I'm pretty sure that award goes to Eli Mills, but I definitely feel like Henry Wu does, d does provide a more of an antagonistic role just because of the kind of person he is and the fact that he created these dinosaurs that aren't really dinosaurs anymore, really. They're just kind of hybrids, but like still, it's just like, yeah. But I, I like the fact that they brought him back again. He, he's a, he was one of the original Jurassic Park actors, so it's really cool. And another callback to the original Jurassic Park is actually in the short scene we see where the T-Rex is in the cage because they're all being transported to uh, this facility thing. It's actually under the Lockwood estate, but they put a goat into the cage and the T-Rex eats it and it's like, where have we seen that before? Oh yeah, in the scene in the original Jurassic Park where one of the dinosaurs eats a goat in its enclosure. I don't know which one it was, but it was a dinosaur. I can't remember if it was a T-Rex or if it was a completely different one. I can't remember exactly, but yeah, it, it's a callback. And Eli does prove to be quite the main villain of the story just because of who he is and what he does. First off, he cuts off Ben Lockwood's life support, making his death not very natural. Like, like instead of dying of old age, he just gets cut off from life support. But that just proves that he is the main villain of this film. Also, he does have one of the more brutal deaths in this film. Kind of a call back to the second film again. So the first brutal death is actually Ken Wheatley, who's actually one of the guys who goes on on the expedition to what's left of the park. And he does, pretty much does the most stupidest thing ever and gets inside the cage with the Indoraptor. It gets his arm snapped off and gets mauled to death. Though we don't actually see it because it's PG-13, but like still, he does die. Very brutal because he's an idiot and he does not realize that's going to kill him because Indoraptor is built for killing, it's gonna kill ya, you know, it, 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 they eat humans. <laughs> so that happens, and of course, 
Eli does get eaten in you know, a very brutal way, kind of like the second film, where two T-Rexes, I'm pretty sure, share one body, essentially. That's kind of the that death of, one, of that one guy. So it's very similar to how Eli dies, where it's not really that brutal, so we just kind of see him get bit, and then he get, you know, and then a leg pops out, and then the, and then that, that goes to the other T-Rex, so it's kind of like that, so yeah, he does die. He deserves it, though, because he was the main villain of the story, he kind of betraying everyone. <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of the idea, it's crazy. And then the final act of the film actually is very reminiscent of the original film, where in this case, it's the Indoraptor who are stalking the group, Whereas the original, it was the Velociraptors who are stuck in the group. It's, it's very similar. Like, you know, it does share like an Easter egg moment where it's like, oh yeah, that happened in the first one too, where they were kind of stuck and they had to like get away from it. It's very similar. Not that exactly the same, but you know, similar. And that basically um, transitions to how it sets up to the third film, which is going to be where the dinosaurs are going to have to, you know, coexist with humans. Essentially, that's kind of what the third film is going to be about. But yeah, that's pretty much all that I have to say about Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom. Overall, it was a very well done film. I, I really enjoyed it. I don't know what people were complaining about. It, it just it wasn't that bad. I had a really good time with it. Again, not a lot of people liked it. You know, I heard a lot of people complaining about the story, just the concept behind it. You know how how it's like oh the series should end. It's like why? Why would you think that it should never end? You know, as far as I'm concerned, they're making more after this. They're they're gonna finish the. The, the current story out with the final film and then they're going to keep making more probably either a live action show or, or just a whole other trilogy of films they're not going to stop making them as far as I'm concerned the director of the, of the next film says that Dominion the current final film is not going to be the end of the actual franchise just all this current two trilogies they've made up to now well 2022 because we have to wait that long for it it will, be, it will not be the end of the franchise which is good because I love this franchise it's just awesome I love me a good dinosaur film a lot. I mean, I read up to a few of the comments saying that you should end, but I just, I don't see the reason. Like, seriously, come on, people. Ugh. Ben, I, I really enjoyed it. The only thing I can really say that I was, I've been disappointed about is the lack of, you know, that theme. Come on. I mean, they did have it. It was barely anything. It was just like, you know, a few notes of the theme. That's it. I know on the, on the, on the bonus material menu, they actually have it, but that's it. Not much I can say about that besides that. But yeah, that's pretty much all I can say about this film. It was really fun. Before doing this review, I had only ever seen it once. Not because I wasn't interested in it, just because I never got around to seeing it again. It just happens. I just, you know, life gets in the way. I never get to see the movie again, and then it goes onto, onto you know, DVD and Blu-ray. I never just, I just never get the chance to see it. But I'm glad I was finally able to do an episode on it because this movie is great. It's just thrilling, it's exciting, there's action, dinosaurs, everything you'd like about it, and yeah, the critics are wrong. It should never end. The series is never going to end, and I really hope it doesn't, because I love Jurassic Park. Jurassic World, but wait, same franchise, you know? <laughs> I love it. But yeah, that's pretty much all I can say. I'm going to give this movie... Huh, okay, well, because I, I did a lot of comparisons with The Lost World, I'm gonna give it 9 out of 10 because, well, I don't know. I just didn't like. Feel, I, did, I, didn't, I didn't feel like it was as good, but I still thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought I had a really good time with it. So that's why I'm gonna give it a 9 out of 10 because it wasn't perfect, but it was still dang good. And it deserves more than what people are saying about it because, come on, people. It's dinosaurs. Come on. <laughs> don't give me this bullshit about it being, you know, a, a series that has. has Hit its end. It's like, come on, seriously. But yeah, no. 9 out of 10. And that's where I'm going to leave this episode. It's a great film, and I highly, highly recommend it. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Reviewed. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button. I really do appreciate it. And if you are new to this channel, subscribe for more episodes of this series, and if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my second channel where I do reaction videos, the link will be in the description. Also, make sure you click that bell so you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. And I'll be back next week with another episode. Alright, see ya.